There is a cost to all of this talk going on. Whether you think we should attack or not from a U.S. policy standpoint, whether people feel that way, there is a cost because about five, six, seven days ago, there would have been all sorts of radar signals coming out of military facilities, government offices there, telephone signals, computer signals, all sorts of things that could be read by intelligence sources. But what do you think is probably happening now while this debate goes on? Well, Tom, we've given Assad a lot of time to think about his condition right now. He may be a monster, but he's incredibly clever. He is shutting down these communications right now. Any communications that are taking place are now on landlines. He's eliminated every signal that he has so that he is not emanating things that we can go against. So in effect, the whole country ends up going dark, and all of these buildings out here that we previously could have narrowed in on, or the U.S. military could have narrowed in on, are suddenly no longer able to be traced that way. But the military still knows where they are, so sure. if there is, for example, a, a command center out there for radar or communications, why not hit it anyway? Well, we will hit those technical facilities. We'll hit an entire target list of fixed facilities. But in the interim, why, while the United States has tried to build a consensus and has discussed what's going on in Syria, Assad has probably been packaging up the contents of those facilities and dispersing them throughout the country. That would also be true of things, for example, like his, his missile supplies? Those would normally, the, his missiles and rockets would normally be confined to garrison facilities. And in the interim, he has dispersed them to places where they would normally not operate, for example, underneath Overpasses and, on highways. And what about things like aircraft? You can't move airfields. No. Assad has probably, and I don't have access to classified cables, moved the aircraft most likely to Iran. That's where they probably are right now. And if all of those assets get moved out, then after the initial strike, they can all be moved back in, and essentially he can recover almost immediately that way if he wishes to. This is very different than the model that we've seen from the Israelis in recent yeah, far, years. Far, far different, Tom. The Israelis aren't worried about building a consensus. They maintain the element of surprise. To include September of 2007, the Israelis struck a nuclear facility in eastern Syria and destroyed it. And then this summer, just this past July on the 5th, the Israelis struck a facility in Latakia and destroyed anti-ship cruise missiles. As you just mentioned earlier, they, just, they revealed the action after it was done. Very, very big difference in the response in Syria very different as well.